Welcome back to NBA TV News and Review. At this stage of their careers, Steve Nash and Dirk Nowitzki are MVP candidates on the two best teams in the league. But back on June 24, 1998, they were acquired by the Dallas Mavericks in separate deals and pegged to be the future of the franchise. It was the beginning of a long friendship, one that has been fostered by equal shares of hardship and success. I was just all over the place, just overwhelmed with everything just coming over to, to Dallas. There were people waiting on me at, at the airport. They brought me to a, a spot and got me fitted for a suit for the press conference. Most fun probably is to uh, buy him a new suit um, and then to get him to wear it was yet another uh, traumatic experience. That day was kind of ironic that we had everything together. We held our jerseys up together. He looked weird with his hair. It was like brown here and the top was, was blonde. And uh, I thought it's, it's, he's a little weird. Dirk, you have a statement you want to make? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm all right. Pass me the ball. <laughs> In the right spot. No, right? no, I'm all right. Dallas had endured countless losing seasons, and they were now counting on Dirk and Steve to change their fortunes. But it seemed they had made the wrong choice. Driving on the Vitsky. Good move, huh? If you come out of Europe, you're a seven-footer, you're a white guy, and you shoot, you're obviously, uh, obviously going to be a soft guy. I mean, you hear it right away, I'll be coming in the game, and my guy would catch the ball, and you hear from the bench, go at him, you know, go at him, he can't get, he's soft. He beat Nowitzki again right there. New language, new culture, new league, uh, he's 20 years old, it's a lot to overcome. It's such a huge step, I, I still can't believe it, you know, it's a totally different style of basketball over here. It's, the pace is much higher, under the basket it's almost like wrestling. Everybody grabs you and pushes you. I'm still not used to it. He called home a lot and that's always a sign that <laughs> things are not good. He was frustrated, he was lonely and uh, yeah, he didn't know if he had made the right decision. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to, uh, to play in this league. And Steve Nash was also having his problems. They brought in a new point guard, they gave him a, a nice contract, and he wasn't producing. You know, the fans, they were disappointed. They booed him in our own gym every time he touched it, and I remember sitting on the floor, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty messed up. This is embarrassing. Fans are booing. It was uh, excruciatingly painful just to watch two great guys go through those experiences. But Nash and Nowitzki would find solace in each other. Dallas Mavericks, one fan at a time. <laughs> one fan at a time, our, our slogan. Your turn. You know, we both came to a new city. We both lived in the same apartment complex, and we hung out. You know, we didn't really know anyone else, so we became friends. I don't know if he could I'm be a I'm pretty much player. an all-rounder. I mean, I can pretty much play hockey to soccer or whatever, tennis. Just let me know, give me the stick, and I'll play hockey pretty much. What did you say? Not much. Not much. He, he's a good tennis player. Excellent tennis player. Let's leave it at that. Steve was huge for, for my development, really. You know, trying to give me confidence even after bad games, trying to talk to me and helping me off the court. We can't all have beautiful hair like Dirk take me out of the hotel and, and so I'm not being homesick all the time. That nice shot. That was terrible. Yeah, that was in the way. And they would use that bond to strengthen their games. It was trial by fire. Both these guys were thrown into this element. Lots of expectations and not a lot of patience. And uh, they spent lots of time in that you know, dark gym back there late night hours. We played horse, we played shooting games, we played one-on-one -on -one games. Uh, just constantly working, working on our games together and, and kind of grew together. Finally, in 2001, it all began to pay off, with Nash emerging as the fiery leader and Dirk as his perfect wingman. Nowitzki steps inside the arc, shedding Wallace, gets it back from Nash. The Mavericks put down a clinic. Come here. Come on now, listen. We got one week left. We got to take care of it now. 
We gotta build from tonight. So the practice this week is better. The season starts better. We gotta build now. Hey, hey, Dirk, take him! Take him, take him, take him, take him. You got help. You got lots of help middle. Lots of help middle, Dirk. It really happened with uh, with me and Steve together. I mean, we really kind of pushed each other uh, to new levels. Nash blows by Anderson. They would finally end the Mavs' 11-year playoff drought, and in the process become perennial All-Stars. To have your friend there with you, and, and he's developing as quick as you are, and, and we're taking this whole team from like winning 20 games to all of a sudden winning 50 games, and one year uh, 60 games, and going to the Western Conference Finals. That was a great experience that uh, that I will never forget. It was more like a college teammate or a high school teammate. It didn't have that kind of distance that, you know, professional sports brings off into the table. They were born out of some really controversial times. They were there for each other in the, the, the depths of their career. And through those relationships, they, they pulled each other out. In essence, they're brothers. The MVP race will likely come down to a choice between Nash and Nowitzki, and you can follow their progress by logging on to NBA.com. Coming up, the best plays of the year from some of the biggest names in the game. Stay tuned.